This week on Simply Ming, we're on the road, this time to Dallas, Texas. We're first gonna try some delicious microbrews from the Four Corners Brewing Company. I just like the opening. You're a pro now. Then we're gonna meet Chef Omar Flores of Casa Rubia. So our secret is a good Spanish octopus. He's gonna cook up some polpa, some octopus a la plancha with the romesco sauce and saffron potatoes. And it's classic. I mean, potatoes and, and octopus go hand in hand. I'm going to take some shrimp and one of those delicious microbrews and make a beer batter to do a shrimp frito misto. This beer's not messing around. This is 7.8% alcohol. Yeah, it'll put you yeah. on your butt. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's going to be delicious. It's coming up on Simply Me. Funding is provided by Ocean Spray. For over 80 years, our grower owners have been growing and harvesting cranberries to bring you and your family our cranberry juices, drinks, and Crazen's dried cranberries. For more information, you can visit Oceanspray.com. Ocean Spray, grower owned since 1930. Simply caring about the planet. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Subaru of New England, a proud sponsor of Simply Ming. Wanjashan, Simply American, Simply Organic, Simply Ming. Hey, this is Ming Tsai from Simply Ming. I'm here in hot West Dallas, Texas, in front of the Four Corners Brewing Company, where they've been brewing delicious microbrews for the last three years. They have a whole bunch of different flavors, but inside also is a chef who has a restaurant literally 200 yards from here at this cool place called Trinity Grows, which is an incubator for restaurants. They have 17 plus restaurants and growing. So let's go inside, meet the owner, try some brews, and you know what? I'm gonna take one of these brews and actually cook with it. Let's go meet these guys. Hey, Omar. What's up, man? Hey, Ming, Ming how are you, Chef? Nice good to see you. you. How are you? Hi, Ming Sai. Chef. Nice to see you. So good to meet you. You got you, some beers here, huh? You joined us at a great time. We're just about to taste um, a couple of our lead beers here. One's called the Local Buzz. Okay. It's a great beer for us. It's great for Texas weather. It's brewed with a little locally sourced honey let's, and some rye malt. Let's do it, man. Open them up. Okay, bet. Dude, that is so cool. Yeah, we use these cool tops. Look at this. It makes I a little. Do one. Yeah, go for it. I love that. It gives you the whole thing. You all going to pour it in the glass or you can oh, you uh, drink it right out of the right? cup. You get your nose in there and smell it. But you can smell the beer. Yeah, right. it's pretty cool. Yeah. I love I like that. So are, are you a purist that you're supposed to pour from up and get a little ahead? Well, we're in Texas, so we <laughs> hang out at the tailgate or the river or the lake. Right. And so uh, it, out of the cans is good enough Cheers, for me. Chef. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers, George. You bet. Welcome. So this is your, one of your best sellers? It's one of our best sellers, crisp and refreshing. Oh, that's good. The other one is uh, kind of on the other end of the spectrum here. It's called El Chingon India Pale Ale. So it really dials up the uh, hops Let's try on that, that too. one. Yeah. So enamored by it. Oh, no, no, I just like the opener. You're a pro now. Oh, my yeah. God. But it's so easy to open. Yeah, it's a great beer. We dry hop that beer, so you'll get a real big blast of hops on, on this beer. But you know, that's just not a gimmick. You actually smell it when you're drinking out of a can. You really want to get your nose into the beers. It's like anything else. Try drinking wine out of a really small opening. It's, you're not going to get the, the full you know, uh, intensity of the bouquet of the... Of the yeah, you really get so the aroma. What, tell me about the other flavors. Have you do what, five or six or seven or what? We do uh, well, We do a variety of things. In the can right now, we, we do four to five year round, yep. and then we do seasonals as they're appropriate. This beer was a seasonal for us. It's called the Super Bee. Right. And uh, it's basically uh, the crazy deal to uh, local buzz here. We dial up the ingredients. So, we, right. yeah, where we're brewing this with about 150 pounds of honey, we're using 300 here plus a lot more malt. Oh, wow. It's a lot more intense, going from 5.4 to about an 8% Saison. And, and as I can tell, it's all hand done, right? You got people there. This is all handcrafted beer and, and hand packaged. We're a craft brewer. It's still relatively small, so there's still a lot of hands touching the product. And right. so it makes it a challenge to really keep consistency you know, from brew to brew. Right. But it's like anything else. You're executing food you know, day in, day out. It's got to right. be the same, right? At Blue Dragon, my joint in Boston, we sell probably you know, 22 cans of beer. Right, which I never thought 10 years ago I'd be selling canned beer. Yeah. But guess what? You pour it into here, it, this tastes just as good, but we don't have this yet, so get this up to the Northeast, will you? We'll work on it. Okay, yeah, we'll dude. So, George, this location actually is significant for you, right? 
Yeah, this location, well, we're here in West Dallas. I'm a native son of Dallas. You know, I grew up like literally down the street here and it was just seeing the place evolve over time. This is really an uh, industrial part of town for decades. Right. And so it's cool to see these you know, buildings repurposed for right. something other than auto shops, which is that's what this place was. Right. I mean, big. you're one of like 17 restaurants. We are, now, right? Yeah, Omar? we are, we are chefs. And yeah. you have probably the, one of the most beautiful bridges in Texas leading everyone to here. We spent a good amount of our capital building that bridge to get people over here to drink some beer. So yeah, we're real proud of it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, dude, proud. cheers. Cheers, cheers. Omar, I love to just hang drink beer with you all day, but we gotta cook, we gotta man. cook. Yeah. All right. Cheers, brother. Hasta la luego. Thank you, man. Let's go. Come on. Trabajando. Dude, nice looking restaurant. Thanks, Chef. Welcome to Costa Rubia. Thank you. This is uh, Sergio Cervantes. He's our head bartender. Hey, nice to see you, That's man. A pleasure. Yeah, today we're making a, a special cocktail, kind of a seasonal cocktail. We're doing a smoked pear uh, cider cocktail. Awesome. Uh, we're going to be using our shrub. Okay. We strained it with smoked pear. Smoked pear? Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So and what, acid, it. vinegar? Yeah, vinegar. We use okay. vinegar base. Uh, this is going to be our Vermont uh, straight rye. This is a great uh, rye because, I mean, it's aged 10 years in a double barrel, so you have that great taste. Embodies the perfection of, uh, of proof. So that's the same thing? That's the yes. stuff? Yeah, okay. yeah, this is cool. here. I mean, it's a little easier to manage, but sorry. No, dude, in a busy <laughs> restaurant. So how long have you been here? Uh, two years, Chef. Two years? Two years, yeah. It's going pretty well. Uh, it's an incubator concept down here. Right. Um, so they have all kinds of different restaurants, us being the Spanish restaurant. So, oh, cool. But all different kinds of genres. You know, there's a, you can get a burger here. You can get Spanish food, Moroccan food. So Obviously, good beer here. Great beer. So that's it. It's just the rye and the shrub? That's all you need. Talk about it's an easy perfect cocktail. Perfect balance, yeah. It's a perfect balance. Really great when it's a busy night. You know, it's yeah. my favorite cocktail to make. Sergio, let's pour you one too, man. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get yourself one in there, brother. We can't drink without the bartender. <laughs> right. So Spanish tapas, and uh, you obviously try to match drinks. Yeah, we, in the we, same we, genre. we try to work, uh, you know, kind of seasonally with the seasons. Obviously, you know, right, right now we're we're in fall, so uh, this is kind of a cocktail. I think kind of embodies fall. Right. Uh, we took the red pears, which are kind of seasonal right now. Right. Uh, smoked them, you know, put them in the vinegar, the sugar, and then we kind of mix them with a little bit of hard spices, with like some cardamom. There's some nutmeg, right. cinnamon in there, so it kind of the essence of fall in a cocktail. Love it. A little dehydrated pear chip, just kind of bring it all together. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Sure, thanks. Uh, you got a kitty yeah, pour. Yeah, you get the short <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Oh, that's delicious. Nice, right? Get that sweetness from the pear. That is delicious. Great, yeah, great but it's so balanced because of the vinegar. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it's not too sweet. You know, a no, lot of cocktails are just a little and too you, sweet. And, and the thing that I love is you can taste the rye. Absolutely. Right? It's yeah. horrible to make a drink and you can't even taste the alcohol. Absolutely. Showing the rye off. Dude, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. We unfortunately have to get to work, right? The little trabajando. Let's so thank it, you guys. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Fantastic. <laughs> Boom. All right, Omar, what's your dish today? So, Chef, we're doing a pulpo a la plancha. So, nice. essentially, it's octopus cooked in a hot plancha. Uh, we're going to serve it with a romesco verde, which is just a roasted vegetable sauce. Cool. Uh, puree up a little bit of spinach and uh, cilantro, kind of give it this bright green color. Beautiful. So, yeah. octopus is hard to get right. What is it your is. secret? So what our do you secret do? is, you know, we, we buy right. a good Spanish octopus. This is a six to eight pounder and we pressure cook it. A lot of people kind of blur, uh, braise oh, so it. So you pressure cook it tender, then you put it on the plancha. Exactly, so we'll pressure okay. cook it, we'll kind of cool. clean it up and finish it on the plancha. So let's do it. So I ha we have a pressure cooker here for you. So how do you, what do we do here? So real simple, uh, we've got some uh, pimenton here. This is a smoked paprika. Okay. Um, uh, sweet or spicy? This is sweet, okay. yeah, but you can get spicy if you like right. a, little, a little heat to it. Just basic mirepoix, right. a little bit of a celery. Carrot, celery, onions? Yeah. Classic mirepoix. Real basic. Some nice oh. knife work there, Chef, but you don't... Thanks, Chef. But you're, you're, chef. Are you going are to end up eating it or not? We're not. Yeah. No, we All just right. you know, we want to make it small so we can extract most of the flavor okay. as quick as possible. Um, octopus. Then the whole thing goes in. The whole thing goes in. This thing's nice and juicy. Right in. All right. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Just a real good bottle of vino tinto, uh, something you want to drink. Obviously, right. you don't want to use any kind of cheap table wine or drinking yeah. wine. That's a great tip. If it says table wine, yeah. it's not for the table. Right. Table wine it wasn't good enough to drink, so don't use it. Right. Wow, a good amount. Good amount in there. You we'll cover some, the whole thing. We'll do some water as well. Okay. A little pepper? A little salt and pepper. Yeah. All, right. All right. So pretty easy. Real simple. Right. Anybody can do this. Awesome. That's it? Yeah. And then how long do you pressure cook it for? Uh, high pressure for 20 minutes, Chef. 20 minutes. All right. We can do that. All right. Now what? So we'll start with Romesco Verde. Um, okay. Real simple recipe. So all the ingredients is what here? Right. So we've got some, some tomatillos here. Right. Uh, we've got some poblano chilies, a little right. bit of shallot, Spanish onion, right. leek, 
garlic, and a little bit of sliced almond. Okay. Okay. Here, can I help? Yeah, let's get it all chopped up. I'll give you these. Uh, you take yeah, them to Matias. I'll take these. You do the poblanos. Okay. So you use seeds in, seeds out. Uh, seeds out, chef. So we want to pull the um, pull the stems, pull the seeds. And this is just rough chop. Right. It's all gonna get kind of pulsed up anyway, so we're not really too oh, concerned. Oh, you're pureeing it. Okay. Right. We're not concerned about the uh, about the size. Got it. Which is good to know, right? No, don't waste time doing knife work if it's going to be pureed. Exactly. Uh, but it should be all about the same size, right? Right, right. We're going to cook it. We want to be a little consistent, so kind of a large dice, but you know, nothing too fancy. We don't want to spend too much time doing it. All right. Good. Is this now? This is a classic sauce. So your your dad and mom, like my parents, are both good cooks, right? They are. Or, yeah. My, are they my professionals dad, or? You know, my, my dad was kind of a semi-professional. We had a couple of restaurants growing up. You did. Uh, yeah, we had. That's not semi-professional, dude. That's professional. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was. There were Mexican restaurants. You know, nothing right. fancy, but you know, real kind of a what they call comida casera, which is kind of home cooked food. Right. Uh, we had one in Chicago and one in El Paso. Nice. Yes. Are they? They're still cooking. Uh, you know, my dad's kind of semi-retired. Uh, mom is no longer here, unfortunately, but... She's here. Yeah, she's here. She's here right now. She's, she's like, actually, look at my son. He's probably making... the better cook of the two, I have to say. Ooh, sorry, Dad. Oops. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, here, I'll put this back here for you. Okay. Thank you. Give you all that. Perfect. Boom. This. Just smash them all? Yeah, give them a quick little smash. Only six? Yeah, six will be good. Okay. I love garlic, though. And here's some leeks. So these leeks have just been rinsed and washed, right? Which is right, important. Yeah, so There's a no, lot, no of, dirt. lot of grit into the into yeah, a pan. Yeah, so we've got a really hot pan back here. I okay. use a paya pan, but you can use any kind of roasting pan All or right. whatnot. Let's get this caramelized. OK. Let's go. Dude, that's a screeching hot pan. So just put them in? Yeah, let's put them in a dry pan, Chef. Uh, okay. We don't want to add any oil yet because it's going to kind of uh, uh, smoke on us. Uh, we're using extra virgin olive oil, which turns a little bit bitter. I think that's it. smart. That's a good tip. And then we'll add a little bit of olive oil and salt and pepper to okay. it. So the veggies kind of cool the pan a little bit. Oh, we're not burning the oil. Nice. So how long do you actually just let it sit to get caramelized? So we're going to kind of toss it, just the oil a little bit, and then we're going to finish it off in the salamander. And if you don't have a salamander at home, you can put this in the oven. Oh, cool. Let so high heat. And high heat, 15, 20 minutes. It's going to be nicely, nicely roasted. All right, this is perfect, because now we got this for 20 minutes, the pulpo, the octo takes 20 minutes, yeah. and they're going to It's be... all come together. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. So looks like you got some potatoes coming. That's classic with octopus, right? It is, Chef. And what we're doing is we're going to make saffron potatoes. We're going to blanch them in some hot oil. Okay. What well, that's going to do is going to kind of pop the skin. We're going to rub the skins off and cook okay. them in a court bouillon, which is right. essentially just kind of a vegetable broth right. uh, with some toasted saffron. All right, so into the fryer? Yep. All right. And what, just four minutes? Yeah, to... three to four minutes just so the skins okay. kind of pop. And we'll just get a, a towel and just kind of clean the skins off. It kind awesome. of rub right off. And then you have one more sauce to complete the dish? Right. So, you know, the, the Spanish have their mojo verde. Uh, right. The Italians have their salsa verde. Right. Uh, this is essentially an herb sauce. So it's an herb sauce with um, a little bit of parsley and cilantro. So if you want to chop that, Chef. Just leaves off? Yeah, leaves off. Okay. Um, I've got a little bit of shallot and garlic here. Kind of goes into the bowl. So garlic, shallot, yep. Right. You've got a little uh, bit of a Spanish anchovy, also known as a bocaron. So kind of rough chop? Yeah, rough chop. Bocaron is kind of rough chopped too. Yep. Uh, these are delicious. I don't know if you've ever had them. I love, sure you've had these, oh, right, man. Chef? The two things that are great in cans. Yeah. Anchovies are great in cans and chipotle on adobo. Right. And that's right. one thing that Spain does really well is their seafood in a can is just amazing out there. Okay. I've got some uh, some cumin here. It's a little toasted cumin. Goes in the bowl. Okay. Uh, red wine vinegar. A little vinagre de jerez, also known as sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar. Nice. So there's nice bright flavors in this. Yeah, it's gonna kind of give the potatoes kind of a little bit of acidity, so they kind of pop, you know. Or else you have kind of just a bland potato. Boss, that's perfect, chef. All of it. Yeah, let's go around right the bowl. Okay. Okay. Good. So we're gonna finish this off with just some extra virgin olive oil. Nice. Yeah. A little bit of kosher salt. S and P. Cracked pepper. So this is kind of the base of the plate. Absolutely. That looks so awesome, right? Fresh, simple. So we'll go a little acid, more olive oil. Oil. Yeah, just a little bit. Of Potatoes are back there going. working. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll take a little little bite of it. Yeah, I'm gonna try that too. Yeah. It's perfect. Not too. Awesome. All right, so potatoes need what? They look good. They look good. Yeah, right. let's pull them out. All right. There you go. Nice and blistered. What? So a really cool technique. Right. Um, grab a clean rag and just kind of start peeling the skins off. 
Love that. Yeah, it's great, right? And they come out nice and clean, just like that. Look Perfect. At that. Yeah. So kind of, they kind of steam themselves right. just by in the rag, right? Yeah, they're they're by no means cooked, but you know the skin's kind of popped a little bit and just kind of gives you the uh, the ability to pull the skins off easily. Yeah. Love that. All right. So we're gonna peel these up and then they go into the corbouillon. Right, corbouillon or any kind of right. any kind of stock you have. You've got you know chicken stock. And how much saffron would you put? This much? That's a good amount. Yeah. Okay. I'd say about a good a good heaping teaspoon. Pitch. Yeah. It's expensive. Which, uh, yeah. So these go right in the uh, in okay. the pot. Fantastic. All right. So now this is gonna go how long in the stove? We're gonna simmer in about 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15. Yeah. All right. All right. There we go. Potatoes on. All right. Octopus is done, chef. All right. You got your veg done. Got our base for mesco done here, chef. Beautiful. We'll let this go. This smells great. Okay. You can yeah. smell the wine. That smells fantastic. Let's go ahead and puree this up. Okay. A uh, little bit of romesco base. Kind of right. goes right in the blender. Nice. And we're going to add some uh, some almond to it. A little bit of sliced almond. Okay. Okay. Cool. So we'll add a little bit in there. Uh, we've got some fresh spinach here. This kind of make the color kind of pop. Interesting. Right. A little bit of olive oil. Kind of get the motor running. Also for flavor. Okay. Use extra virgin. You want more of this in there too? Yeah, we can put a little more in there. Why not? Let's make a lot. It smells so good. Yeah, it's gonna be fantastic. You can tell. This is a little masa tea vinegar, also known as sherry vinegar. Good glug in there. Kind of give that. That's it. Yeah, that's Salt it. Salt pepper. Yeah, let's do a little pepper in there. Sorry, chef. No worries. So a little pepper, and then a little bit of salt. Oh, you know what, chef? One more thing. Let's do. Uh, yeah, let's do sure. a little fresh lemon juice in there too. We'll not take about a half a lemon. Okay. Squeeze that in there. No seeds. That's not, so two levels of acid. Yeah. Get the vinegar. I love, you know, lemon juice is one of my favorite ingredients. I use it in almost everything. You know what? I'm with you there. So start slow. Yeah, we'll start slow. Chef, that looks awesome. Yeah, that's going to be great. Nicely pureed up, nicely seasoned. Let's see what this looks like, buddy. Uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's sexy. Mm hmm. Let's get a little taste. Let's see what we did. I'm going to use my pinky. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. All right, let's get this octopus out here. Okay. Grab my cutting board. Oh, yeah. So, this is 20 minutes. And you'll see it's going to be almost fall apart tender. Oh, yeah, it is tender. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, that's the way to go. Beautiful. It smells so good. It's gonna be fantastic. So, the way we uh, cook this, so usually, you know, we cut the head off. Right. Um, save this for the cooks. Cooks love that. They make a ceviche out of it. <laughs> Dude, you got some, he's got some asbestos fingers, man. So, normally you let this chill a little bit. You wanna let it chill. Right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you know, it's, it's it's always best fresh out of the fresh cooker. Right. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have hands of steel like us chefs, you know, you want to <laughs> let it chill a and little bit. And then you bit. peel? Right. What I do, I like to keep the suction cups on because it right. kind of gives a little bit of a, a little bit of texture. But kind of like all this uh, this purple stuff right yeah. here on the back, this kind of just pulls right off. Yeah, it does. Let's see? All right. So for service, you have this and you obviously you would have right. it chilled. Already then... clean, ready to go. Um, like I said, we like to leave the tentacles on because it kind of gives just a little bit of texture and it right. still makes it look like octopus. If you pull it all off, just it looks kind of weird. Right. Yeah, you need the tentacles. Yeah. All right, so then to cook this, you boom out on la plancha? Yeah, so what we do, we've got a hot plancha over here. Yep. Um, we'll do, we'll take a couple pieces of this octopus. Nicely cleaned. Right. Yeah, this stuff's super tender, man. Okay, we'll season this up. That's awesome. A little more salt and pepper. Sure. Yeah, thanks, chef. Okay. Cool. And just a little bit of olive oil. Um, Hot plancha. Okay. Yeah, if you don't have a hot plancha, a hot skillet will work. Awesome. And how long is that you going to cook that for, Chef? Maybe 30 seconds to a minute on each side, Chef. All right. Yeah. All right, Chef. Those look awesome. Yeah, so nice and caramelized on both sides, uh -huh. Chef. I love the color of these potatoes, dude. These are like freaking fluorescent. Vibrant, right? Yeah, no kidding. They're okay. unbelievable. So we're going to plate this uh, real simple. Okay. We're going to take a romesco verde. Okay. Okay. Spoon. A little of this on the plate. However you want to plate it, it doesn't really matter. Take our octopus. Right. It's nicely caramelized on both sides. Beautiful. Right. Just kind of layer them like that. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, we've got our potatoes, which are cooked. 
we go. These are great. These have like a nice saffron flavor too. Oh my god, they look so cool. And it's classic. I mean, potatoes and, and octopus just kind of they just go hand in hand. Kinda Absolutely. Like, kind of like a peanut butter and jelly, right? So we've got our uh, our mojo verde here. Right. This is gonna kind of tie the whole dish together. This has got the uh, the bucaronis, the herbs. Yeah. Um, a little bit of the olive oil and sherry. Be kind of liberal with that stuff. On the potatoes, on the octopus, a little on the plate. That's it, that's the plate, Chef. Dude, that looks awesome. Unfortunately, before we sit down and eat and drink, uh, I'm gonna do a quick fried shrimp dish. Let's do it. With some delicious beer. Sounds All right. good, Chef. Beautiful. I can't wait to try your dish, Omar. It looks Thanks, awesome. Chef. All right, I'm doing a quick beer battered shrimp and some other veg. I want you to meet some onion rings, some thin rings and lemon, jalapeno, like four strips. Be seated, it. please. Let's do it. I'm gonna make a beer batter. Okay. Equal parts of cornstarch and all-purpose flour. Then some baking soda, baking powder. A beer. Those pop tops are Pop tops amazing. are genius. Just genius. So this is gonna add, obviously, some sweetness to it because of the beer. Uh, and this beer's not messing around. This is 7.8% alcohol, right? Yeah, that'll put you so in your butt. It will, it will hurt you. So, again, you're always looking for pancake batter consistency. I think I'm gonna need about the whole can. That's my guess. We'll see here. So that looks about right. I want it to be sticky, all right? So, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna make a quick aioli. So here we just have some real mayonnaise. I'm gonna juice the lemon. If a seed or two falls in, that's not a big deal. We're gonna fry these up too. Four or five of these. This will be good. Yeah. You, want the, you want the onions in there, Chef? Everything. All right. Everything so. goes in. Jalapenos? Please. So to this, we're gonna make a quick aioli, a little garlic minced, a little cilantro chopped, some paprika, a little salt, a little pepper. This obviously make in advance. It's a very simple aioli. I don't know. Vinegar is great, I think, for fried stuff, but I do love yeah. a good aioli. You gotta have a little acid to kind of cut all that fat, but you're right. Oh, that's awesome. And then last but not least, some shrimp. Cleaned, peeled. Nice. That's gonna be awesome. That's it. This is all mixed. Oh wait, I found these in his walk-in. These are house-made pickles, yeah, right? Bread and butter. Yeah, we serve these with our, our charcuterie here. Is there anything better than fried pickles? I don't think so. All right, so this is gonna go fried into the fryer. Here we go. All right, so shrimp in. Oh yeah, baby. Nice batter, chef. Yeah, it's pretty good. Let's get all this in. Don't ever dump batter into a fryer, right? You gotta pick them out like that. All right, so this is gonna take about three minutes all day to cook through, and then we get to eat. All right, these are looking good, chef. Look great, yeah, the batter looks fantastic. Nice and light. All right. A little salt there, chef. All right. Nice and high. Beautiful. There's no rhyme or reason. Anything you want. Now the lemon, now the jalapeno. Pickle, 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 pickle. That is a frito misto. Chef? Yep, crumbs are my favorite. I got to throw a couple in there, too. We get to go eat. Yeah. Let's go, buddy. Great. So, chef, we're drinking a little Montanilla Sherry. I think pairs well with Love the octopus it. and the uh, frito misto we have there. Dude, your dish looks awesome. Thanks. Mmm. Oh, dude. That's killer, man. It was so tender. Right? right? The fresh cooking really just kind of turns it up. My potatoes are awesome. It's such a bright, delicious dish, Chef. But what I really love is that you charred it so it's crispy and then tender as anything. No, this is great, too. Yeah, the, um, the batter on here is fantastic. So crisp, right? Yeah, super light and crisp. Nice. Oh my, thank you so much, man. Congrats on Casa Rubio. Thanks, Chef. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. Delicious food. Appreciate and it. For you all out there, thank you so much for watching. And as always, peace and good eating. All right, get me a shrimp. The shrimp is money. For more information on Simply Ming, including upcoming guests and more, visit us online at ming.com slash simplyming. Closed captioning provided by Melissa's World Variety Produce is a proud sponsor of Simply Ming. Funding is provided by
Ocean Spray. For over 80 years, our grower owners have been growing and harvesting cranberries to bring you and your family our cranberry juices, drinks, and Crazen's dried cranberries. For more information, you can visit Oceanspray.com. Ocean Spray. Grower owned since 1930. Our recipe for success. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Subaru of New England, a proud sponsor of Simply Mang. Handcrafted and brewed in the historic Hudson Valley of New York, using ingredients sourced only from North America, Wanjishan offers an artisanal selection of Asian-inspired organic soy sauces and condiments. WJS, Simply American, Simply Organic, and a proud sponsor of Simply Ming. Select episodes of this series are available on the Simply Ming Cooking with Friends and Family DVD. A companion cookbook is also available. To order, visit shoppbs.org slash simplyming or call 1-800-PLAY-PBS.